This is the guy that we're looking for. He is insane technically. He can pretty much do everything. Set pieces, crossing, passing, long passing, dribbling, press resistant. He is that guy. And he would be the type of signing that we make in January. And we're like, you know what? We didn't plan to be top of the table, but we're top of the table now. And we plan on remaining top of the table. Yes, we're planning on winning the Premier League. What else would you be planning to do when you're top in January? We were top of the table by Christmas, but shall we be top of the table by the new year? We're about to take on Arsenal in our last game of 2024, and we have dropped down to third place. Liverpool, Manchester City have both won. They've overtaken us. Chelsea are just below us, and they're becoming a bit annoying. It looks like they really want to throw their hat in this competition, and it's still in our hands, and it's still up to us whether we want to finish top of the table by the turn of the year we take on arsenal at st james's park then we go away to brentford on new year's day we have everton in there and then we have an fa cup game as well a big episode today especially in the premier league because we dropped points against manchester united and then soon after that we just about beat nottingham forest so we need a big performance today especially against a top team like arsenal football club Joao Felix is finally fully fit and he will be involved today. We have a fully fit squad for the first time since September, which is a big positive on our end. And you can see now the players are looking to compete. Joao Felix wants to start, Lukaku wants to start. This is what we need. This is who we're facing. Arsenal Football Club in seventh place, undefeated in the last five. That's an insane team to have, but I have no idea how they're only in seventh place. They've had a very slow start to the season. Mikel Arteta is not cooking anything. He's burning up the kitchen, if anything, and they're down in seventh. Not really great, but to be fair, points-wise, they're not too far from the top, but I doubt they'll be involved in any title conversation. We very much are, and this is our team we're going with today. Pope in goal. We have Willock, Botman, Silva, and Levramento, Paulinha, Gemarais, and Jolinton as a midfield three. Almiron on the left, Paqueta on the right, and Alexander Isak leading the line. We're going for the 4-1-4-1 here today. A very similar approach that we took against Liverpool in that second game in the Carabao Cup. Cup. I don't really fancy us going for the 4-2-3-1 and pressing them very high because they can definitely play through us. You saw the quality they have. You saw the insane midfield they have. We're going to go for the more physical approach. You know, having Paulinha and Joe Linton both in there should really balance things out. And we're hoping that the quality that may be brought by Paqueta and Guimaraes will really trouble Arsenal. Here is Miguel Amra looking to trouble Arsenal, but he misses. We're going to rely on that quite a lot. You know, he is going to be the main outlet. Say what you will about Miguel Almiron. He's very direct and that's what we need. We need a player on the wing, especially on the left-hand side, that will continue to ask questions of the Arsenal defence. And uh, he did there. Didn't lead to anything, but he still asked the question, didn't he? The Silva clearing it away. Five minutes gone. Is Rice for Arsenal. Back to Nuno Menge. A left to Gabriel Martinelli. Good play there by Livramento. Who finds Antonio Silva, who is cool on the ball and gets us up the field. Fantastic play by Silva, who keeps going and he wins us a foul. Antonio Silva has been one of the best defenders in the league. Let's just be real. Yeah? I told you about this guy. I mean, I continuously give him props and he continuously deserves it. There will be moments where we try to press Arsenal. This is definitely not going to be a low block in any sense of the word. It will be more of a mid block, you know, really congest that midfield. And like I said, at times be aggressive to win the ball back. But then that means we may leave ourselves exposed like that. And Arsenal do have the quality to play through us. And they did there. Fortunately for us, they have an empty gun up top. Yeah, this guy is firing blanks. Gabriel Jesus very much known for that. <laughs> Let's not give him too many chances though because he could potentially still hurt us. But that time, not quite happening. Okay, Silva again. To Joe Linton. Then playing a 4-3-3 means we are at times also going to struggle to get the ball up the field unless we go very direct like that. And there's Miguel Almiron once again being that outlet on the left-hand side. Checks back to Willock. 
Here's Botman, good play from us here, advancing the ball. Here's Palinha with the shot and forces the save out of Aaron Ramsdale. I believe that is our first shot on target. We have to be a bit creative in how we move the ball around. We have ourselves a corner here. It is Bruno Guimarães. The goalkeeper comes and he eventually catches. His race. Timuna Mensch. Good interception there by Paulinha. Paulinha has really taken authority in that midfield to make sure that he grabs this game by the scruff of the neck, as they say. Lucas Paqueta looking to be influential as well. There is Paulinha again. Wins it back. Jolinton. Deliveramento. To Paqueta, good play, overlapping Levramento in some space. Levramento looks for the cutback. He got it. He found a play in black and white. Unfortunately, the ball found the gloves of the goalkeeper. Good reaction save, actually. We're playing well. We're playing well. We're definitely winning that midfield battle. I mentioned the combination of Joe Linton and Joao Palinha in there. It's proven to be effective. Five minutes from halftime. Not many chances for either team, to be honest. Really grueling battle, especially in the central areas. But here's Joel Linton looking to get us up the field. Once again, he finds Tino Livramento. Livramento in space. Nobody really making a run centrally there, though. Livramento will still find a teammate. And Bruno Guimaraes got it all wrong that time. That's the one part that we haven't really done well in this game. We haven't really created the clear-cut chances as of yet. You know, we are really winning the physical battle, you know, winning all of our duels, both on the ground and aerially. And here is Lucas Paqueta once again involved and finds Tino Levramento. This time takes the shot on himself and Aaron Ramsdale makes another save and we are starting to batter Arsenal here. Really taking control in this game. Another cross in. They'll just about get rid of it. It's half time. It's half time. It's goalless. I'm very much impressed with the performance. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Not really allowing Arsenal any chances. We've kind of overrun them, to be honest, in that midfield. The running power of Joe Linton and Palinha has really made the difference. Bruno Guimaraes also involved in getting us up the field. We just need those big chances to start coming. We need to get Isak more involved. And when those chances do come, let's take them. Almiron to Willock. Oh, Willock tackle there. That's a foul ref. That's a foul ref. It's a yellow card to Bukayo Saka. I'm surprised he's playing. I haven't mentioned his name today. That is credit to Joe Willock. Locking up his former teammate there. Oh, they're trying to press us. They're being very aggressive. They're frustrated. They're rattled. Two yellow cards in the space of what? 20 seconds? Starting to get under their skin here. They didn't expect a tough game. They like it soft. Yeah? They don't like it rough. Oh, but you see on this side, if it ain't rough, it ain't fun. Joe Linton. To Paqueta. Ball in there. Nobody wins the header. When that, oh, Palinha will win every duel, bro. You don't really want to get into a 50-50 with this guy. You may not come out alive. Chance there on target. Not a convincing shot, though. The poor shot choice, to be fair. Probably should have gone with his right foot. Not sure what he was doing in that moment, but... Arsenal are looking rattled. They aren't looking comfortable in the game. We are starting the second half like we ended the first. It's Odegaard. To Martinelli. Martinelli has not gotten anything out of Tino Livramento, but he may have right here for the first time in the game. He's actually gotten away from him and he will make his way into the box, but Nick Pope stops the ball. Questionable way to stop the ball, but he still stopped the ball either way. Free kick to Arsenal. Could be in a dangerous area depending on who takes this. Let's just position ourselves well. And deal with it. They're actually going to lay it off. And the shot is on target. Pope is there. He makes the save. It is still kept in. There's Rice, but there's Antonio Silva. Almiron to Paqueta. Potential counter-attack on here. Ooh, just too far ahead of 
Miguel Almiron starting to think of making changes now. We definitely do have options to change the game, so there are no excuses. Joao Palinha is an absolute monster, man. He is an absolute tackling monster, I tell you. Bruno Guimaraes, fantastic pass in there. Just fellow Brazilian, Joe Linton. Joe Linton just about gets it to Alexander Isak, who was offside. He hasn't really been involved, man. We haven't been able to find him. I can't really blame him because he's making the runs and making himself available. We just can't really find him. But potentially with the changes we make, we will be able to do so. Lucas Paqueta will actually come off and will bring on Anthony Gordon, the ultimate impact sub. He's been amazing recently. Kind of unlucky to miss out on the starting 11 today. But he is on. Joel Felix is also on on the left-hand side, freshening things up in the wide areas. Hopefully, they'll be able to support Isak a bit better and uh, aid in the chance creation department. We have about 20 minutes left in the game, so definitely enough time. There is Joel Linton. Good tackle. Potential counter on here. Anthony Gordon with the fresh legs, with the pace to get in behind. He is in the box, but what will he do? He'll find Alexander Isak. And there's the sex first chance of the game. His first noticeable opportunity here today. I mean, he did what he could. He got on target. A corner. To be whipped in by Bruno Guimaraes. Will be put in the mixer there. And Isak just about heads it over the top. <sighs> it's getting frustrating. It's getting frustrating because we have clearly been the better team here today. It's just not quite happening for Alexander Isak. So let's bring on Romelu Lukaku up top. Let's see what he can do. Maybe he can offer us a different kind of option. Because yeah, Isak has not been on it today. To be fair, he hasn't been on it for quite a while started the season off hot but it did kind of dwindle down and we have some space behind our defensive Antonio Silva is looking to recover and cover that position look at this guy bro this guy is insane the man holds up our whole defense together and from defense now a potential counter on here here is Joao Felix we have all kinds of options around him Joao Felix still going still going still going and we'll finish He's just that guy. He is just that guy. Joao Felix is the difference today. Let's not forget where it started though. Antonio Silva, fantastic work at the back. Wins the ball back. Very direct. Gets it forward. Joao Felix in possession. All kinds of runners around him. But he took it upon himself. He took the responsibility. He took the risk. Not to play the pass but to take the shot. And we lead at St. James's Park. Not much time left in the game. That could be a big, big goal in the 85th minute. Joao Felix comes off the bench and gets us the goal we've been looking for. And as it stands, we go back top of the Premier League table. A part of me cannot believe I'm actually saying that we're about to go into January, lads. But we're not there yet. About three minutes left. This is good work from our attackers. Just forcing them back. Not allowing them to get any passing option forward. Joe Linton. I mean, he got the connection there, but didn't quite win it. Here's Gabriel Jesus in a deeper position for Arsenal. Get to Declan Rice. And to stop his time. Four minutes added on. Let's not lose our heads. Just keep our positions. Let's keep our positions. Esaka. Oh, Saka. But in there, there's Silva. There's Silva. Lukaku. To Joel Linton. Just get us up the field. Uh, cut out there by Nuno Menj. Timber now. Oh, there's Bruno. Good tackle from him. Here's Joao Felix once again. He tried to go long. Give us the foul, ref. Give us the foul. No foul. Okay, it's fine. Advantage played on. Joao Felix still has the ball here and he finds Anthony Gordon. And Gordon will seal it for us. 2-0 to Newcastle United. Three points for Newcastle United. Back to the top of the Premier League table. The fans are loving it on Tyneside. We are loving it. Could it be that season? Could it be one of those special seasons, boys? Just about halfway through the campaign. And we are finding ways of getting results, aren't we? 
We are finding ways. Yes, we've had a couple of hiccups. Yes, we've slipped up a couple of times. But more often than not, we get over the line. And that's where we're top of the table. The best team in England on current form. Yeah, we'll definitely take that. The two subs on the wings, Joao Felix and Anthony Gordon, changing up the game, both in the score sheet. Particularly Joao Felix scoring the first goal, creating the second goal. Antonio Silva at the back, a rock. Joao Paulinho in the midfield, just suffocating thorns. Yeah, choking them out winning that midfield battle for us we're top of the table 14 wins one draw three losses only 10 goals conceded heading into the new year liverpool in second place two points behind us manchester city as well 41 points two points behind us very much liking what i'm seeing here man united in fourth chelsea in fifth i mean that's a bit of a gap to them but you know they could potentially still be in this and uh, yeah, this is how the rest of the table is looking. We have Brighton in 19th, which is absolutely awful. West Brom all the way down in 20th, Fulham in the relegation zone as well. Nothing too surprising there. In the FA Cup, we have, of course, been drawn against the Bristol Rovers. And that game will be coming on later in this episode of the Carabao Cup. Of course, we are in the semi-finals against Norwich City, which I genuinely don't believe. We're facing Norwich City. Yeah, just beat them and we're off to Wembley in a cup final. Of course, the preliminary round of the Europa League. We have Borussia Dortmund. So we are still competing on all fronts in all four competitions top of the premier league table and still in all the cups very exciting times for newcastle united and we are into january now which means the transfer window is open and chelsea football club have recalled romelu lukaku from his loan i can't help but feel like they're feeling a bit insecure here yeah they were like yeah you can have them on loan just don't do better than us and now we're top of the table and they're feeling a certain kind of way they're feeling touched they're feeling emotional now no lukaku's a bit of a divisive figure but he still got goals for us you know he filled in when isak was out he took over the europa league games well the majority of them he scored in the cups as well he scored four goals at anfield mate right so he still helped us to a degree but unfortunately he's back at chelsea now ways keen has joined us so i guess you could say one out and one in a different kind of attack of one that will help us more in the pressing more in the running more work rate but not really that out in our target man that you sometimes need just to hit it long our remaining budget is 33 million pounds and we're looking for a midfielder specifically a deep line playmaker a guy to rotate with Bruno Guimaraes because he's the only kind of midfielder we have in the squad step in Douglas Luiz a fellow Brazilian with a bit of a Brazilian thing going on here we have a bit of a Portuguese thing going on here and Douglas Luiz at Aston Villa Aston Villa sit in 10th place in the Premier League table. We are top of the Premier League table, so you cannot even talk to us, yeah? We come knocking, you better answer, boy, yeah? This is the guy that we're looking for. He is insane technically. He can pretty much do everything. Set pieces, crossing, passing, long passing, dribbling, press resistant. He is that guy. And he would be the type of signing that we make in January. And we're like, you know what? We didn't plan to be top of the table, but we're top of the table now. And we plan on remaining top of the table. Yes, we're planning on winning the Premier League. What else would you be planning to do when you're top in January? Do we have enough money though to make that signing? His value is 33.5. We have about 33. So let's see. We're going to start things off here with a 28 million pound offer to Aston Villa. They're asking for Joe Linton. Bro, we're not letting go of Joe. Yeah, where are we going to get another Joe, bro? It's not going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So let's go again for 28. Let's go 28.5 actually. 28.5 million pounds. The Douglas Louise, his value is 33.5. They're asking for 29.7. Looks like we're going to get the deal done here, lads. Don't really want to get caught up in the finer details of, you know, an extra pound or not. We're just going to accept that 29.7 million pound deal accepted by Aston Villa for Douglas Luiz. He's on 95k. We're going to offer him 95k, a four-year contract as an important player and 700k as a signing on bonus which he will take. Douglas Louise officially joins Newcastle United. Just joins the Portuguese speaking dons. Yeah, we have like Joao Palenha in there. We have Joao Lenten, we have Bruno Guimaraes, we have Antonio Silva, we have Joao Felix. Bro, we are building something special here. Yeah, the Portuguese connection. Yeah. The Portuguese revolution, if you may, led by the Portuguese Don himself, Jose Mourinho, signed 29.7 million pounds. Very excited about that signing. It'll take off some pressure from Bruno Guimaraes. Like I said, he can take set pieces as well, which is a key area of the field where 
We have not been at our best, haven't we? Brentford Football Club. All I'll say is, we never forget. Regulon crossed in there! So typical. There's Brian and Burma just breaking through our defense and he will make it 2-0 and we will lose to Brentford. All we had to do is beat Brentford who will win less than five to make it into the Champions League. And we didn't. Don't you get these bees extinct? Oh, baby, we never forget you. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. We never forget away at the G Tech Community Stadium. They're winless in five, but if you followed us recently, that probably means we're gonna lose this game. Anyway, the team are going with Pope in goal, Willock, Bartman, Silva, Livramento. We have Douglas Louise already starting. Yeah, Yamaraish and Joe Linton in there as well. The two impact stops from the last game, Joao Felix and Anthony Gordon start, and Alexander Isak leads the line. We have a Brazilian midfield trio. Let's see how that works out. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. This means we have Moise Kin on the bench. This means we have Lucas Paqueta on the bench. This means we have João Paulinha on the bench. Our bench is looking stronger than ever and we're going to need it to be if we plan on getting over the line. Here is Luis to Felix. João Felix could pass in there to Isaac. Isaac back to Douglas Luis. Luis to Gordon. Having that technically secure play at the base of our midfield will allow us to be far more composed in possession and score goals like that. Will we move a team to the left, to the right and look for that penetrating pass and get it. And Alexander Isak is back on the scoring sheet. A fantastic team goal. Very measured, very calculated a good turn by Isak and a good finish and we lead against Brentford. There's Tony. Oh, they played in there. Oh, Botman just slightly out of position. There! 1-1! One, one. That didn't last long. Brian Mbwemo. Oh, he's back. He's back. Brian Mbwemo back to haunt us yet again. A mistake by Botman, an even bigger mistake by Nick Pope, in my opinion. How is he not saving that, my bro? How are you not saving that, my bro? How are you not ex fully extending your arm? If we do win this league, yeah, I think we're going to win it in spite of Nick Pope. You know? Because sometimes I genuinely think this guy's playing against us. Like, I, I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Liverpool have signed Pervis Estupinian from Brighton and Hove Albion. So they're looking to also add some reinforcements in this title race. Douglas Luizia with the crossing there from the free kick ball. Falls the way of Willock. I don't know what he did there. It looked for a bit of a flick. It did not work at all. Five minutes from halftime. And here come Brentford once again and we started well but we've just lost control of the game to be honest we really have manchester city have scored there i'm not sure who they're playing against oh win that win that isaac come on come on <sighs> lost control of it there but he still has it back to joe felix felix joe felix felix through everyone Wide! Oh, Joao! You did the hard part, my bro. You skinned up everyone. Twisted them in and out and just... And he just blasted it wide. Two minutes added on. Is it possible to maybe create one more chance? Nah, it looks like it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They, on the other hand, may actually have the last say in this half. Antonio Silva gets the first connection. Did somebody win that header and clear the ball away? Willock does. Half time. 1-1. One, one. Started well. Started very, very well. But we're not at our best today. I'm not liking how we're defending the transitions. We're looking way too open. Whenever they get the ball back and they elect to counter, they are playing at will. Nobody's putting a foot in. Nobody's really being physical and stopping them from breaking. So let's deal with that, please. Here we are. Here we are again. Another counter-attack. Way too open. Way too much space. 
for them to just run into. And Silva, in the end, looks to get us out of that spot of bother. Oh my goodness, Douglas Louise. Let's uh, let's act like that didn't happen. Yeah, just look the other way. Let's just look the other way. Awful pass there. Let's actually make some changes here because something is definitely off. Definitely. We're going to move Silva over to right back. Actually, Livramento has not dealt well, like I said, in those transitions. Let's bring on Fabian Schar at the back. Look to solidify things just a bit more. Because, yeah, we're too open, man. We're way too open. Brentford's still on the attack. Here's Tony. Louise got a foot in, but Brentford still have a ball. There's Willock. Willock to Isak. Isak, you are way too deep, Micah. You're playing like a midfielder, bro. Get up the field, mate! Oh, Joe Felix lost it. Tony. Tumbuemo. This is not good, lads. This is really not good. A combination there of Shaw and Silva win it back. Joe Linton gets us out. Anthony Gordon, you've been quiet all game, my bro. Do something for us. Alexander Isak maybe looks to create an angle to take a shot on. It's straight at the goalkeeper, though. Isak will come off. Moise Keane will come on for his debut. Let's see if he can impress with his first few minutes in a Newcastle shirt. Lucas Paqueta on at the right and Joel Paulinha on in midfield. Not too long left in the game. Let's see if the subs can make an impact. This is one luxury, like I said, we haven't had for a very long time, man. Being able to bring on someone like Lucas Paqueta from the bench, you know, that's really something big. And let's hope Moise Kin will have the impact. Because, bro, it's you. Lukaku's gone. Yeah, Lukaku is gone. If Isak ain't playing, you're the guy. Botman does well. Felix to Gimaraes. Gimaraes drives us up the field. Plays it into Moise Kin. And Moise Kin, first involvement for Newcastle. Off the post will fall back to him. And he'll just about sneak it in. Luck on his side. Luck on your Newcastle side for the first time in what? Feels like forever. How many times have we been unlucky? Through on goal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's a goal. We lead against Brentford. Final few minutes of the game. Just about getting over the line now. It's just about getting over the line. Here's Paqueta. To Felix. To Felix. To oh, almost, almost, almost. Didn't quite happen. Oh, there's Moise Kin pressing. Oh, just about play through it there. Not the best position from Joel Linton in that press, to be honest, but only two minutes added on, about a minute left in the game. We stop this attack and we pick up three points, lads. Just force them back, force them back, force them back. And there's the final whistle. Three points at the GTA Community Stadium. We didn't play our best today. We played very well for about 20 minutes. Basically, since they equalized, they were the better team. I'll be real, they were. But we get the win in the end. Once again, the subs making an impact of some sort. Moise Kin getting his first goal and already feels like he should voice out an opinion now. I'm not putting pressure on you, Gaffer, but I wanted to say I'm really feeling a part of the dressing room. I've got a great relationship with the rest of the lads. Bro, you just got here, which, okay, that's pretty impressive. I think I could really add something if I started games rather than always being on the bench. I like the ambition. I like the fact that he thinks he's that guy. To be fair, he's the reason we won the game. But let's calm it down a bit, mate. We are top of the table now, and Manchester City and Liverpool have both just played ahead of us, and they have both drawn. We have Man City drawing to Leeds, and we have Liverpool drawing to Tottenham Hotspur. So this is a chance for us to extend the gap at the top of the Premier League table as we take on Everton Football Club, who sit in 18th place once again, battling relegation. Not really a fun time right now to be an Everton fan. And 
we're about to make it worse. Yeah, we go away to Goodison Park. The team is Pope in goal, who is playing against us, by the way. Willock, Botman, Silva, Livramento, Gimaraes, and Palinha. Moise Keen starts alongside Paqueta Almirana and Alexander Isak. Keen asked to start. He's playing his former team at his former ground, Everton where he was labeled a flop, where he was told he wasn't good enough and he was basically taken back to Italy, but we have brought him back and hopefully he comes back to haunt Everton. Here he is on the ball winning it and looking to lay it off to Isak who takes a shot there, saved by Jordan Pickford, corner to Newcastle United. Bruno Gimaraes on set-piece duty, no Douglas Luiz in the starting lineup today, he is on the bench. Playing that double pivot of Bruno and Palenia, which has been more than just astonishing, really. Bit of the top there, slightly out of position here. Come on, Willick. Get back, get back. Crossed in towards the back post, the Livermento. Gets it away. Here come Novison again. Joao McNeil. Joao Palinha. Joao Palinha. Oh, Joao Palinha. I love this guy. I swear I love this guy. Where's the kid? Gets us forward. Still going. Uh, he looked at his options there in the end. Chooses to go back to Bruno. Bruno to Palinha. Palinha plays it in behind there towards Miguel Almiron. Almiron on the right hand side. Looks to find Isak. It's cleared away. Back to Antonio Silva, we go again, Leveramento, 30 minutes gone, not much has happened, Lucas Paqueta picks up the ball, oh that was a hell of a strike saved by Pickford, fully stretched to make that save as well. We have ourselves another corner here, Bruno again on set piece duty, in there towards Isak and there is Alexander Isak. On the money once again, this time from a corner, this time with the header meeting the delivery from Bruno. And we lead at Goodison Park as we look to extend our gap at the top of the Premier League table. Beautiful stuff. It could get even better. Isak, a tight angle there. Took it on his left foot there, straight at the keeper. Another corner, another corner. We just scored from one. Can we do it once again? Three minutes from halftime. Bruno Gimaraes. Another good delivery in there. They're struggling to get rid of it. And it falls the way of Moise Kin. He just swung a foot at it. High and wide. Yeah, nowhere near the target, mate. Into the second half here. They come Everton through to Corey. To Onyango. Oh, deflection, a bit of a wicked deflection there. It could have gone anywhere. It could have gone anywhere. And we know Nick Pope wasn't going to do anything. We know him by now, yeah? We know his game, bro. We know what he does. Come on, Pope. Oh, whoa, whoa. A save at the near post. He's just going to find himself. Preston headed away, just about. Get rid of it, lads, get rid of it. Delhi in the box there, we do get a tackle in. Here is Paqueta. We see the run there from, is that Keen or is that Isak? It is Moise Keen who takes it on brilliantly in the end, still fights for it and finds Isak who just made the wrong decision. Palinha wins it. Here's Almiron. Livramento to Miguel Almiron. Almiron to Paqueta. Paqueta slips it in there towards Isaac. Should have scored. Should have scored that one, mate. Should have made it two. We just need that second goal and just make it comfortable. That's, that's all we're looking for. Get that second goal. Give us a bit of breathing room. Just so that no mistakes may happen. And there is Paqueta once again. He's been at the center of everything we're doing going forward. Once again, we have another corner. They are just about staying in this game. With about 30 minutes left in it. 
Oh, another chance there. Issa got his head on it. Everton somehow seem weak from set pieces. I'm not sure what's going on here. Pickford in all kinds of trouble as well there. As we have another corner. What is this, like the fifth or sixth one now? This time they headed away. Almiron. To Bruno. Still Bruno. Still Bruno. There's Palinha. Pressure on Everton. Keep winning it around the edge of their box. Almiron cannot force his way through. But he was fouled in the process. Is it too close? It's inside the D. You know, you'd, you'd have to be extremely accurate if you want to get this. And actually going to go for the goalkeeper side. Actually not going to go over the wall here. Lucas Paqueta on that left foot. Can he curl it into the top corner? It is Jordan Pickford. It is off the post. It bounces around and it's put in. It, it's, oh, wow, it's a goal. It's a goal. I thought for a second it would be ruled out for whatever reason. Maybe handball, maybe offside. No, it's a good goal. Miguel Almiron on the score sheet. Just the quickest to react to that. It bounced off him. <laughs> it just bounced off him and he got that second connection, puts it in the net. It's 2-0. That's exactly what we need. And Lucas Paqueta, who again, like I said, has been central to everything, will be coming off. We're going to bring on Anthony Gordon for the final few minutes of the game. Going to bring on Joe Linton and going to bring on Douglas Luiz, completely changing up that midfield. Just to keep the energy levels up and we're doing that all the way towards the end. You can see we're still pressing, we're still aggressive, we're still forcing Everton back. And I've liked this performance. It's been a bit of a professional performance, you know, nothing too spectacular. We haven't blown them away or anything like that. We've played well, you know, we've created chances. Some prettier than others, but two goals, you know, so we can't really complain all that much. But can we potentially make it three? Oh, good pass there from Louise. Moise Keane, seems like he's not going to score against his former team here. Douglas Luiz takes the corner. Nobody gets their head on it. Everton look to break, but we definitely have enough bodies at the back there to deal with this. And there's Van Botman just steps in. Wins it back comfortably. And there is full time. A 2-0 win at Goodison Park. Like I said, a professional performance. Nothing really to write home about. Nothing that's really going to grab the headlines. We just win. Clean sheet. We keep it stepping. And we add points to the table. Our final game is against the Bristol Rovers. And we're going to sim it in the FA Cup. Yes, I'm still going to go for this whole simming thing. I know what has happened in the last few games. I know it's a cup game, but lads, we have to sim some games. Yeah. We're going with a very strong team, by the way. A very strong team against Bristol Rovers because I can't trust these bonds, bro. I genuinely can't. Quick sim. 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. Just about, just about did enough. Let's not even mention anything. Almiron and Barnes score. We go through in the FA Cup. Let's keep it stepping. Ashraf Hakimi of Manchester City. Just one player of the month there for December. Like I said, we stay at the top of the gap. Now has extended to four points ahead of City and Liverpool. Nine points ahead of Chelsea and ten ahead of the United and West Ham very much liking that our next game however is in the Carabao Cup and it's against Norwich City the other semi-final first leg has Everton and Sunderland drawing so Sunderland can still make the cup final I know I know listen they're the enemy yeah but I can't lie yeah I'd really like to have them in the final at Wembley for the Carabao Cup but firstly let's do what we can control we have North City we have Bournemouth in the league I believe we're going to have another FA Cup game drawn in there as well and we have Norwich again then we go into February February is going to be stupid yeah because if we somehow make it to the Carabao Cup final which we plan on doing that game could be challenging get in there somehow if we're still in the FA Cup we could have an FA Cup game in there somehow bro we're gonna have Tottenham away we're gonna have United away we're gonna have Wolves away we're gonna have Arsenal away we're gonna have Dortmund in there as well 
that month is going to make or break our season. I'll see exactly how we deal with that. But anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, please do drop a like on it and subscribe as well if you have enjoyed this video. I've been Pretty Crusher. I'll see you guys next time.